uh, their names have got forgotten in history. Uh, to bring about um, a movement, a lot we need to all do our part. So we all need to use the gifts that God has given us. Since I've been painting since I was two, no real formal training, and I felt in my heart to, to spread the message through art. There are many platforms uh, of art that have uh, marginalized black artists for years, so part of my uh, movement, a part of my walk and journey is to try to decolonize some of these spaces by presenting our story and our history. I started off uh, with this exhibit creating Jimmy Lee Jackson. And everyone can see Jimmy Lee Jackson here. And we see the American flag behind him and we see uh, a scuffle. Jimmy Lee Jackson is pinnacle, especially talking about the right to vote. Rights to vote are being marginalized all over the country. And a lot of us forgot that the right to vote came through the blood of Jimmy Lee Jackson. Jimmy Lee Jackson was a, uh, a deacon, a Baptist deacon, and he was protesting for the right to vote uh, where he was chased down by a mob, shot and killed. The killing of Jimmy Lee Jackson is what caused an uh, outrage of the country and for the march from Selma to Montgomery. So again, everybody say Jimmy Lee Jackson. Jimmy Lee Jackson. So as a thought uh, for today, I'm gonna say let us remember. That is a thought that I'm going to use. Tell your neighbor, say, let us remember. Let us remember. So let us remember Jimmy Lee Jackson. So Jimmy Lee Jackson's death caused national outrage. People came together. Uh, but in particularly, people came together uh, in Ms. Boykin's house, Amelia Boykin's. This is right here. She's a bit older, but when she was young, she was much like Stacey Abrams, a very big person who uh, gathered people for voter registration. And at Amelia Boykin's in the Milliken Boykin's hometown in Alabama, we had Dr. King, uh, his organization, and, and Hosea Williams and John Lewis come together in her house. And because of strict segregation laws, uh, they all had to stay at her house. And they had meetings about the, the march from Selma, uh, the, the march for voting rights. So we all know about the famous uh, Edmund Pettus Bridge. Martha King said, you know, the rest of you guys go out there and I'll meet you guys down the road. So John Lewis and Jose Williams, uh, went out forth, and as they were on their way, uh, they were beaten. A lot of, we all know about that story, but a lot of people forget to talk about Amelia Boykins. It was much worse for her, because she lived in that town, and she had to deal with, deal with the ridicule afterward. But we cannot forget her contribution as far as her, her activism, her faith. The, the next role, and I, and I also put her next to Stacey Abrams, not only because of the activism, the, the march of voting rights, but to me, their work is very similar, and the work is about continuity. The work is not about what happened then, but the work is about picking up the torch and keeping it on, right? So you always have to ask your question, what are you doing right now, right? That happened then, what are we doing now? As we move on, I painted a young John Lewis and I painted a old John Lewis, and I get a lot of questions about why I positioned them or how, what, what are they saying, and John Lewis was determined as a young man, but as the Reverend says, the, the the movement is not a sprint, it's a marathon. His whole life he spent fighting for the right to vote and, and the rights for all of our rights to be what they were. He became congressman, John Lewis, and by the end of his life he was seeing voting rights stripped. So it's up to us to take on that fight. Behind us I have the uh, Reverend Al Sharpton, and let us, not re let us remember, right, uh, the work that he's done over the years. There's some names on this canvas that predate the Reverend Al Sharpton, but it almost seems like every generation we gotta deal with the same mess. And I don't know what you see when you see those names. Well, when I see those names, I see my name. I see the names of my family member. It could be you, especially if you're a person of faith. The Bible says, how can you love your brother? How can you say you love God whom you have not seen, but yet say you love your brother who you see every day? So we have to take this cause as a cause of our own and behind, the name of this painting is called Strange Fruits. It comes from the song Strange Fruits. But the fruit that's on the tree is us. And from that fruit, they built wealth and they built this country. So it's time that we take on the march, we take on the responsibility of the movement and the God-given gift that he's given us. And I'm not going to be before you long. I want to say thank you, and that is all that I have for you today. Any questions? Any questions in the audience? Yes, sir. What's going on, Jim? How you feel? How do I feel? I feel blessed and highly favored. How about you? I'm talking about it. I feel the same. 
scripture the other day, Psalms 137. It has nine verses. And it begins to talk about the people of Jerusalem who were being captive by the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar. And all of Israel had to be taken up and stripped, right? And they all were taken into bondage. And so this 137th division of Psalms is a lament. And it starts out by saying, right, uh, they asked us to sing the Lord's song by the river. What river are we talking about? We're talking about the Euphrates River. And, and it says that we hung up our harps on the poplar or the willow tree, and we refused to sing the Lord's song. And it says, you know, but let my, let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth if I do not remember the Lord's song. And how does this segue into what you're saying? We, we may be in Babylon, but we're not Babylonians. You, they, they can take our clothes, but that does not make us a Babylonian. They can take our bracelet, that does not make us a Babylonian. They can break up our families, that does not make us a Babylonian. But it's important to always sing the Lord's song because it's going to cause you to remember who you are. And that's why I say it's important for us to get in touch with our history and our past. Right? Because if we don't understand the history, where do we go from here? As the reference says, uh, Moses crossed the Sea of Reeds. But Joshua had to go across the Jordan. And if we don't cling back to, to the lineage and to the movement, we're not going to know how to get over certain traumas in our neighborhood. I know a lot of people talk about black on black crime, but they don't ever talk about white on white crime. They don't ever talk about domestic uh, situations in white communities. And yet, our communities are flooded with the worst sort of things from education to health care to guns to police reform. All kinds of things happen in our community that don't have others. So we just have to continue to do the work. And we all have different skill sets. We all have to get that message out. We just got to continue to work. You know, we all have to do our part. Uh, there's so many hands that went up. Yes, Ashley? Um, can you talk about this painting all the way back here? And also underline, um, I know activism and youth can take action to bring forth change for our business. I think we talked talk about it briefly earlier. But for those watching, can you talk about how you use your gift basically to uh, spread messages? So the paintings in the back have to do with Jesus. Uh, one is a light-skinned Jesus, the other one's a brown Jesus. One of them talks about sacrifice, the other one talks about resurrection. As I painted this um, at the time, I, I grew up a uh, single parent home, all kinds of trouble at home, and what changed my life around was the word of Jesus Christ. The word came in my life and that would move me to change. Uh, I wouldn't say that's the same story for everyone, but I know that the, the wonder working power of the blood and the story of Jesus Christ is the first and last hope for our community. Uh, a lot of us are, are waiting 
for something to happen. I'm waiting for Jesus Christ to come and take the reins. But to come back to the movement of some of these paintings in the back, we all can interpret our own thing. Uh, recently, uh, the January 6th committee is going over the insurrection and Donald Trump's connection. And I believe that uh, there was a group of people that had an insurrection to create change, and I believe this country needs a resurrection. Mm. And so we need to get tapped into the power that raised Christ from his enemies, right? We may be buried, and we may not be in day one, we may not be in day two, but when we get to day three, we have to be ready to wake up. And that's, that's what that means to me. It can mean something different to you. Yes. Yes, yes. Yes, I'm, I'm curious. I wanted to know as a pastor and an artist, as you were faced with your canvas, how did you feel when you were inspired to move with a brush, how was your emotion? How was your feeling? So, I grew up in Nassau County, a small town on island, and uh, often I see big trucks with truck signs. Uh, in my own way to protest, I wear a lot of shirts, social justice shirts. I wear the biggest, loudest message I can. And, uh, I don't go to bother people that have these Trump flags, but it seems that they always come to bother me about my t-shirt. And it came to a point where I said to myself, what is my biggest form of protest, right? That everybody has their own gifts and their own situations. And, and I felt the Spirit of God touch me. He says, you have to unite the material with the spiritual. And you can bring that word through, through the gift that I gave you. So I began to paint these uh, as that sort of message, as that sort of protest. Yes, it's the word. Yeah, I have a short question. If a youth came up to you and asked you to briefly explain why did you decide to name your exhibit Movement of the Faith, what would your answer be? So I name my I name my exhibit Movement of Faith because it's what a lot of these activists during the time, without the faith to, to know that they were gonna win and trust in God that a change was gonna happen over time, they wouldn't have done it. And so faith is believing in things that you don't see, but knowing that it's going to happen, right? And God gives you that insurance in your belly. And you can walk in that word and that calling because he told you in your belly that it's going to happen. So I'm standing here today out of faith, actually. This whole painting is a movement out of faith. I didn't know I was going to be here, but God said pain. And so movement of faith, when you, when you have God on your side and when you believe in him, and I, maybe it's not for everybody because not everybody grew up in the church, and you know that God has brought you over some things. Maybe there's some people in the Bible and some prophets in the Bible, they have stories that are unbelievable. But you know your own story. And God has brought me from a mighty long way and over a lot. And I, and I can identify with these prophets in that same way, in that they saw that the country, they, 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 they loved, the, they loved the, their people more than themselves and put the faith on the line, not for themselves, but for their people. And so we can see in history how history turned out in their favor. And we, we can see a Dr. Martin Luther King uh, where they crucified him throughout his life. But when he died, they made a holiday out of him. We can look back to Jesus and see the same people that crucified him wind up worshiping him. So if you keep the faith, the person that you follow, which is our Lord and Jesus Christ, you know that you'll get your victory. Oh, we got one. Is that okay, Brother James? So, one, one of my biggest heroes is uh, Reverend Alshaw, and I thank God for his life and all that he does for us around the world, not just in this country. Uh, you've been a great inspiration since you've been young. I've known you since you've been a baby. And we came from Long Beach, your hometown, to be here with you because we celebrate your life, and uh, we thank you. And so we, we drove here to be with you. What, what inspires you about Reverend Al Sharpton, and you, you come from a family who's truly amazing, and you are truly a, a light in Long Beach, where a lot of people are like, we're Long Beach, California? You know, Long Beach, New York, Nassau County, but there's a small percentage of black and white, and those black and white, I remember Reverend Al Sharpton came, and I was excited, and it was people that was there was just scared. They was nervous, and, 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 I, and he just came in like, you come in, you know, with that anointing, that blessing, and I was just, 
so excited that I, that was the first opportunity I got a chance to meet him in person years ago. Uh, what it excites you about his life and his walk that God has given him in this day and time? Uh, as you inspire us. As you I, uh, thank you, James. Uh, James is uh, the leader of one of my mentors growing up, James Hodge. Uh, I, I'm a McHenry. My name is Ronald McHenry in my small community, Long Beach. Uh, black folk were redlined behind the tracks. And uh, my great grandfather, Napoleon McHenry, came up from the down south of Virginia for a better life. And he would, uh, he, when he came to Long Beach, he was one of the first 10 black families in Long Beach. Uh, they established a church, Christian Light, uh, and he was also vice president of the NAACP. They got Dr. King to come down because of the conditions uh, that black and brown folk were going through in Long Beach, and they marched throughout Long Beach. They established Christian Light, Dr. King, and then they also established the Martin Luther King Center, and then he went to the next town over, which is Rocco Center. When I think back to the things that my grandfather did, they inspired me. And there is no one that is following in the lineage of Dr. King more than the Reverend Al Sharpton. And the reason why I come here every Saturday and every Monday is because he says all the time, continuity. Uh, when I first came here, he probably doesn't remember this because he signed a, a, a thousand books that day of the Righteous Troublemakers. I asked that he write double portion. And what I mean by that is I've, I've seen him through the news, like all of us, um, overcome and overcome and overcome. And as I sit there, I say, this man's anointed. Yeah. People got all this stuff to say. I say, this is a man of God. How dare they disrespect the man of God? He's anointed. He's anointed for this work. He could have sat down a long time ago with his accomplishments. He continues to press. He says it's not about how you get there, it's about how you stay there. And no one makes money or profit off poor people like that, fighting for poor people. So I know that this work and fighting for the marginalized is not going to get me rich, but I feel a calling deep down inside. And I know the same guy that kept him will keep me. Thank you, Brother James. All right, I'm going to be before you long, I promise. All right. All right. All right, God bless everyone. I don't know if it, that was it. All right. Thank you, thank you.